We want to welcome every one of you today to Bible study. And we are, you are in the correct place. You are in the house of God. This is the house of God. And uh, today we will study the Apostle. But before we go that, go that way, we will recap a little and then get down to some meaning of the Apostle. And then we will study some of the, the traits of the Apostles. So you get your notebook, get your get your pencil, your pen, whatsoever, take notes, your Bible, turn the line, and God will bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, pray that you bless our studs tonight. Pray that your hands will be upon us. The Holy Spirit will be our teacher. Take control, Holy Ghost. Take control, Holy Spirit. Take control of mind. Take control of our thoughts. Take control of our right ideas and feed our spirit. Change our soul. Transform it in the name of Jesus. And let the body be conformed to our spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Study on the churches. We were talking about the, the five whole gifts that Jesus gave to the church. In the book of Ephesians 4.10, it says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all in all. I want you to note that these gifts were given during the resurrection of Jesus Christ, during his resurrection from the dead, during the time when he got into heaven at the right hand of the Father. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. So in the heavenly position, he gave apostles, some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. He he gave these gifts to the church so that the church can be blessed from it. Why was this give, give why were these gifts given? They were given for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the body of Christ. In other, in other words, they were given to prepare the church for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. Hallelujah. What the calling accomplish in the church? These gifts will accomplish unity and knowledge. When you have these gifts in the operation of the church, we will come to the unity of the faith. And this is something that is not done as yet in the church. There is still 
all sorts of conflicts, all sorts of bullism in the church. People who suppose to, who are called themselves apostles, called themselves prophets, who are not apostles and who are not prophets. I say you must know your ministry and what you are called to. Hallelujah. And to the knowledge of the Son of God, to the knowledge, we are given knowledge through this ministry. And uh, this ministry would cause us to become perfect. Hallelujah. And to be, and to come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Christ will be stamped within us. Christ will be formed within us. Christ may be made whole within us. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. That we henceforth no more be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby lie they lie in wait to deceive. There are many people in the church who call themselves, call themselves various names towards the ministry. These people deceive, deceive their false workers in the church that deceive many people. But we need the fivefold gifting, the fivefold ministry in the church to expose these sort of ministry in the church. The cunning craftiness whereby the lie in wait to deceive. We need to expose them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Instead of speaking the truth in love, we will grow up to become, in every respect, mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Hallelujah. We will become like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will grow up to be like him. We will be speaking the truth in love. And we will become mature. He will be our head. And we will follow him like the great shepherd. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds up itself in love as each part does its work. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God wants a whole body that is joined together by all of us believers supporting each other growing up in love and we must do our part in the church. There's a part that God has got in store for you and there's a part that God wants you to become. Before I go to the teaching of the apostle, I want to recap something. The word disciple. It means a learner, a pupil, one who follows someone's teaching, a student, one who is studying and training in something. Now, the twelve 
foundational apostles were first disciples of Jesus. They were learners of Jesus. They were students of Jesus. And they sat at his feet, learning from him. The Apostle Paul said, I am really a man which am a Jew, brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers. Even the Apostle Paul had a trainer in Gamaliel, and he was taught the laws by Gamaliel. The twelve disciples, they were taught by Jesus. One of them betrayed him. But you know what? The other twelve became mighty men. The other eleven became mighty men. And one was added to them, Matthias. And they became the mighty foundational apostles of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, these were disciples first. But Jesus also had not only 12 disciples, but many others. The Bible says after the 12, there were 70 that were sent out to cities two by two. And they went into various cities preaching and teaching the kingdom of God. So Jesus not only had had 12 disciples, but he had many, many, but 12 main ones. So after that, I want you to know the difference between a disciple and a follower of Christ. A disciple as a learner, hallelujah, let me go back there. A disciple is a learner, a pupil, one who follows one teaching, a student, one who's studying and training something. You could be that now, or you could be just a follower of Jesus. I want you to note here that Jesus sent out disciples. He did not send out followers. Many of us are followers and we are not disciples. Followers. Followers. To follow one who proceeds. To join him as an attendant accompanying him. The Bible says in the book of Mark 10, 52, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, that faith had made thee whole, and immediately received his sight and followed Jesus. I want you to note here that this man became a follower of Christ. He was not committed as, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. He was not a learner. He was not a pupil, but he was a follower of Jesus Christ. And many times in the church, we have a lot of followers. 
about the people coming to church, but just following and not disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you this day to check yourself and examine yourself. Am I a follower or a disciple? Am I a learner? Am I a student? Am I sitting at the feet of Jesus? Am I taught of his word? Am I in his word or just proceeding along? Ha, ha, ha. Proceeding along with him. To be a disciple, you will be committed to him. You will come with him, presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. You would not be conformed to this world, but you will be transformed by the renewing of a mind, so that you will prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. When you are a disciple of Christ, you will seek to be transformed into the image and to the likeness of Christ. And for you to be transformed into the image and likeness of, a, of Christ, you need not to be conformed to this world, but you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the mind, the soul of the believer that is a disciple will be transformed. Hallelujah. I want you to know that a disciple's mind is transformed and renewed. And when it's transformed and renewed, it will prove that which is good that which is acceptable, that which is the perfect will of God. There are many people in the church that have not really got down to that. I got some people that tell me, a pastor, you get old, you're sick, you need to rest. I said, no. God gave me a ministry, and God gave me a ministry to work. And I will not be conformed to what the world says, but I will prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. I will do the will of God in this generation that I am living in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Too many people are just, just playing church and are just followers of Christ and need to become disciples. I want to note here that the 12 disciples that follow Jesus were foundational apostles. One of them backslide, betrayed Jesus, and turned his back on Jesus. You can have people like that in the church who will turn their back betray the trust of the pastor of the church board and go away and move away into false doctrines. But I want to tell you, 11 of them, 11 of them 
pick with Christ. And then they choose one of the seven tips. Matthias to replace Judas. And so you had a replacement of the twelve apostles. Now who's an apostle? We had disciples, we had followers, but who's an apostle of Jesus Christ? And the apostle of Jesus Christ is a delegate. Hallelujah. He's what? A delegate. An ambassador. In other words, it's like an official of another kingdom. An apostle represents the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. He's a messenger, specially trained, a pupil that is well trained. He must be qualified first before he become or she become an apostle. The ground ground work must be done. You must be trained in doctrines, trained in the word of God. You must know the word. You must spend hours in receiving the word of God. A messenger. If you are a messenger, you must have a message. Hallelujah. An apostle is a man of the word, a man who has a message from God to speak to the people. Hallelujah. One sent forth with others. Hallelujah. He sent forth with others to act as an ambassador. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me give you a further definition. A person given a position and rank of authority. Say authority. An apostle is a person who given a position and rank of authority with the commission to go and command to carry it out as they go upon the arrival of said destination. You will find apostles have a destination, say destination, destination, a place, a geographical location. He will be given a command a commission and an authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They have the power, authority, rank, and jurisdiction to carry out God's mission, plan, and purpose to which they are sent. I repeat that again. They have the power, authority, rank, and jurisdiction to carry out God's mission, plan, and purpose to which they are sent. Each person who's an apostle have got a mission. Is a high-ranking official in the kingdom of God. He is a person that had ranking and power of the kingdom. An 
Apostle is a kingdom person that represents the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And therefore I share to you, when you confront an apostle, you will know him because of his authority, because of the way that he speaks, because of his commission, because of the jurisdiction that he's given, because of the ranks that he is in, you will know him and you will recognize him. Have you ever confront an apostle? An apostle was first a believer. He was a follower maybe, but he became a disciple. Learn, follow, learn. And now that he's learned of Christ, he's dispatched, note, and the parcel the believer called and dispatched with power, authority to represent the kingdom. You will recognize these men because they are men, not only to be loved, but to be feared. Men who are close to Christ, close to God. Men that will not shed any kind of wrong or false Doctrine, hallelujah, because they know the word. They are on a special military. They are on a special military expedition to go on the front line against the forces of darkness, opening up new territories establish churches for Christ, establish churches for Christ. Now note, note, they are in the front line of battle, front line of the work of God. There are people that don't run behind others to hide and they don't talk false things. There are people when church over they don't run out to the car and go their way home. They stay back in the church and see what they could do. They spend a few minutes and maybe an hour in prayer before and after the service. These are people who come against the dark forces of hell. They live in the house of God. They represent Jesus Christ. They battle against the python spirit that's in operation, that's hindering us from taken new territories and they establish the work. If you want to see such a person, you must look before the service and after the service. Are they still there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The first apostle is not the twelve, but Jesus, Jesus was the first apostle. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers 
of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, stood before us in the form of a man. And after he died and he rose again and took the form of God back. But before that, he was our apostle. And even now, he is our apostle. And he set the example of an apostle. Hallelujah. The foundational apostle of Jesus and those that came later. You know, Jesus was the first, then you had the twelve, Peter, John, Andrew, James, John, and so forth. They had special ability. They received divine revelation, and they established churches and organized churches. You want to know who's an apostle? A person that did receive special revelation to establish and to organize churches. They're called with authority, special power to act on behalf of Christ. There are not many apostles in this world, but when you see them, you will know them. Hallelujah. They build and establish new churches in homes. They, they have an established authority accountability, rule and regulation, bylaws, how everything is going to be governed and run. That is what they do. They, they look into the government of the church. They bring organized and established role. They establish a network and build relationships so that there be agreement in the church. They appoint leaders to govern and overseer in the church. They appoint pastors over the church, leaders and deacons over the church. They step in as a referee when there's a disagreement or a problem in the ministry or in churches. Those are men who can stand up and with the wisdom of God able to make correct decision Hallelujah. They establish and carry out some doctrine. They do not preach and teach a false doctrine. Uh, I'm sorry that time is against us. But if you can get a picture of this green, the apostle, who he is, Bill established a man of authority, authority and accountability 
a man who brings organization to the church, a man who establishes a network and builds relationships in the church, appoint leaders to govern over share the church, appoint pastors and leaders and deacons in the church. This is an apostle. Hallelujah. I'm going to close here and continue next week. What really make these men? Why are they so loved? Not only are they loved, but they are many times they are hate. And they come under criticism. If you look at the Apostle Paul, you would see in him a man of authority, a man of wisdom, a man full of the Spirit of God, a man who organized the church, built churches, and, and he was able to establish the work of God in many, many places in the then known world. The Apostle Paul did more than any other apostles that I know. And there are two things that are outstanding in the apostles' life. I want you to note, there are two things that are outstanding in the apostles' life. Outstanding fruits of the Spirit and gifts of the Spirit. I will continue next week from here. But when you look in the apostles' life, you find the fruit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, meekness, faith, and so on. When you look in the apostles' life, you find gifts of the Spirit in the operation, healing, miracles, tongues, diverse kinds of tongues, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. These are things that are in full operation in the apostles' life. If you say that you are an apostle, you have these outstanding gifts and fruits of the Spirit in your life. Could be God is calling you towards that. You're a man, a woman, who is called to organize and to bring the church in order. Your mind of authority and power. And many times you come under criticism because of the way you operate in the authority that you take in Christ. And the way you move in the spirit will cause other men and women who are not apostles to criticize and not true apostles and not recognizing the role of apostleship to criticize the ministry of the apostles. I will continue here next week. 
signs of the apostles. Hallelujah. Before I close, I want to go back what we have done. Remember we say that these gifts are for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. Before we became, before we had apostles, we first had disciples. The ministry of apostleship begins with discipleship. You must be a learner, a pupil, one that follow the teaching of Christ, a student of Christ, and one who is studying and trained by Christ. You must be a person of the Word, a learner. Hallelujah. You must not be a follower. We have too many people in the church today that are just followers. Come to church and leave. But you will find disciples thick and they become greater in the ministry. Hallelujah. Not followers that just stick around a while and when service finish, they're gone. But when you are a disciple, you learn to take up responsibility. You become dedicated. You be not conform to the world, but you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. A, dis a follower must be a disciple. And from a disciple, God will lead you onwards. Hallelujah. Remember, an apostle is, is a delegated person. He's delegated by Christ. He's ambassador. He represents the kingdom of God. Do not speak of men, but speak of God and what the kingdom of God represents. He's a messenger. He's a person with a message. One who is sent with others and with authority to fulfill the purpose of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a person of the kingdom. An apostle is a person who does warfare. He go in the front line of battle. Like the apostle Paul went to Philippi. He did not confront people that were ready for the gospel. But he confronted a girl who was who was possessed with a spirit of Python. Hallelujah. And he cast that spirit out of that little girl. And through that, he gained confidence and authority to preach the word in Philippi. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
member of false apostle is Jesus. We have 12 foundational apostles. We have 12 foundational apostles. Special ability and power. Special revelation. And we will continue here next week. God bless you. I want you to spend some time restudying the Word of God. We study what we went through and see how God is able to separate men and women from normal people to become supernaturally, divinely equipped. But as we go through this fivefold ministry, you will find God equip, hallelujah, God equip and authorize, authorize men and women of him. You got to be totally sold over to Christ. Men that completely give over. We not conform to this, to this world, but we transform by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will bless your people. And in Jesus' name, I pray that your word will form roots within them, O oh God. We pray that your word will grow with power and authority within your people. Have your own way now. I bind every work of Satan, every work that seeks to hinder your word. I pray that your word will have free course and will move like a mighty two-edged sword, cutting every form of sin and unbelief and doubt. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Pastor David, God bless you.